finish. Thank you, Levites. Thank you. Thank you. You, you can stay right there. You don't even have to rush. That's, that's where we belong, right here in his presence. When you work so hard to get in his presence, don't be so quick to come out. When you work so hard to get in it, don't be so quick to come out of his presence. Certainly, while we stay right there, we celebrate God for my wife this morning. Pastor Shelley, come on, let's celebrate God. This is certainly a week of victory that we celebrate in my house. Most of you all know that my wife has been dealing with some treatments for the last almost two months now, dealing with three times a day. Well, we're here declaring the victory that today will be the last day. <laughs> Hallelujah. And for that, we celebrate God. And for that, we give him all of the glory. For I will learn how to rejoice with those who rejoice. <laughs> yeah. Certainly, we thank God for you. We thank God for his faithfulness. We celebrate God for our executive pastor, first impressions, our deacons, ministers, elders. Media and Sound Ministry, Newman, Levites, those that are serving with us, certainly we celebrate God for you in your assignment in the house. Certainly we thank God for you that are assembled in this sanctuary on this morning. We celebrate those of you that are home, that are watching us, viewing us. We know that we can only have a certain capacity in the sanctuary and we have a plethora of CLM family that are online viewing us. Certainly, we thank God for you that take shifts week after week to come and gather in this sanctuary. We thank you for your faithfulness. But even in this, I give God all the glory. Even in this, we celebrate him. There's such a sweet presence in the house this morning certainly while we have concluded our fasting weeks I still believe we're in the midst of consecration and I believe we've had some watchmen that's been on the wall on this week and this is the result of us seeking his face Certainly, we're going to just pick up where we left off. Can right, I surrender just a little bit of it, and I promise you we're going to shift. I wish I could sing it the way I feel it. Thank God for Jesus on this morning. We're going to pick right up where we left off. We're 
we're going to deal with the last six verses of Ezekiel chapter 3. And I'll read that in just a second. They don't have to put that on the screen just yet. I'll read that in just a second. We'll be concluding with verses 22 through 27. This morning we'll be dealing with Watchmen part 2. Somebody shout Watchmen part 2. We'll be dealing with Watchmen part 2. Dealing with the life and assignment of this prophet Ezekiel. This man who has been labeled Watchman to the house of Israel, to the exiles in Babylon. Last week we dealt with Ezekiel the Watchman regarding the roles of his assignment in hearing, seeing, and warning. Somebody shout hearing, seeing, and warning. What God showed him as it related to the Jewish exiles in Babylon. Today, we will deal with the last three areas of the watchmen that we will see in this text, which are isolation, restraints from the assignment, and discipline. The last three areas that we'll deal with as it relates to this particular assignment as the watchman, isolation, restraints from the assignment, and discipline. Oftentimes we hear the term that people use when they decide to take a break from things, which is called a sabbatical. Certainly agree that we all need seasons where we need to just unplug and deal with self-care. Somebody shout self-care. But can I tell you that a spiritual sabbatical is not meant for you to deal with self-care. It's not meant for you to unplug from what God has called you to do. I don't want us to confuse the unplugging and self-care season with a spiritual sabbatical. Somebody shout spiritual sabbatical. Spiritual sabbatical is a season or moment where you don't necessarily unplug to get away from people, but you do it to get closer to God. It's not about unplugging from people, but it's about drawing closer to God. Spiritual sabbatical is absolutely vital for the assignment that God has graced us to do as watchmen in this season and hour. A season where you are intentional about focusing on the spiritual things and matters of your life. We said at the top of this year that this will be a year where we are intentional about where we are seeking the kingdom first. Somebody shout kingdom first. Everything in this season, everything in this year must suggest that we are seeking kingdom first. A sabbatical is a season where you seek the presence, you hear his voice, and you experience his glory. Let me share that again. A spiritual sabbatical is a season where you seek his presence, you hear his voice, and you experience his glory. There will be a season where God will need to isolate. Somebody shout isolate. There will be a season where God needs to isolate you to himself to have some one-on-one time with you. I want to pause there because isolation can be negative and it can be positive. Isolation in the negative sense could suggest that you are being isolated because of what you can possibly do. Uh, because of your actions. I remember as a child always getting in trouble in school. I was a bad kid. I was the bad student. I'm going to tell you the truth. I was a bad student. Uh, And the teacher would always say, Mr. Burton, please isolate yourself to the corner. Isolate your, yeah, she told me, isolate yourself to the corner. But understand, isolation also can be a positive to where God needs to isolate you so that he can get you to himself so he can deposit in you what you need for the assignment. Uh, Watchmen, please understand that during this season of isolation season, God will not only share with you, but he will also reveal his glory. Oh, Lord have mercy. One of the benefits of being isolated is that God will, he will reveal his glory to you in that season of isolation. Uh, One of the benefits of the season of 
isolation is that it's a time where God is perfecting something in you and he is going to reveal his glory simply because you are in place. Uh, Can I tell you for that season, for some, isolation may be a season that's filled with challenges. Let me see the hands of folk where you have seemed like you've been in a season of isolation, but it seemed like it was a season of loneliness. It seemed like it was a season where you were being cut. It seemed like you were in a season where, Lord, everything around me, it's going wrong. Can I tell you, you're in the right place. It's in that season of isolation where God wants to perfect his work in you, but before he can do that, there must be a cutting. There must be a season to where you are separated from others so that you can draw close to him. Somebody shout, isolation is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Uh, God must perfect a work in you before he imparts what you need for the assignment and before he releases his glory and reveals his glory to you during that season of isolation. Here in the text, we find Ezekiel. You can put that on the screen in verse 22. I want us to read that collectively. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain. Somebody shout plain. And I will there talk with thee. I want to look at that word plain because it seems as if God was isolating Ezekiel for a particular purpose. When you look at the word plain, the word plain, it's translated as valley. Somebody shout valley. It's translated as valley. It's amazing because we all are familiar with Ezekiel. We preached a few weeks ago about the valley of dry bones and how Ezekiel prophesied to the wind. He prophesied to the air, which caused the bones to come back together. It was amazing uh, about this valley because I believe this is a place where God wanted Ezekiel disconnected from everything so that he can pour into him for a particular assignment. This assignment being the assignment of the watchman. It amazes me that God isolates Ezekiel in this valley. Watch this and you can write this down. The name Ezekiel, it's translated as God strengthens or strengthened by God. Let me say that again. The name Ezekiel means God strengthened or strengthened by God. I believe God isolated Ezekiel to not only speak to him, but to also strengthen him for for what he was about to encounter with those that he was assigned to you. Can I tell you that God will isolate you to a place just so he can get the glory out of your life? For some of us, you're trying to understand and realize, God, why am I in this season of isolation? Why do you have me in this particular place? Can I tell you the same way God strengthened Ezekiel? God is going to strengthen you during your season of isolation. There's got to be some stuff that God cuts away so that he can pull you to himself. Lord have mercy. Who am I talking to this morning? There may be a season that you come upon that you know nothing about. Lord, I've never been in a season like this. I've never experienced ups and downs like this. I've never experienced challenges like this. Well, you've got to change your talk because it's not about you. God has you in a season to where you must depend solely on him. The season of isolation is to prepare you for the assignment of the watchman. Watch this. Maybe a season and place where God is going to call you that may be a place where he needs to strengthen you. And I tell you that your your spiritual season of sabbatical or isolation is not meant to be a vacation. Lord, oh Lord, the place where God is calling you, it may not, it may not look like Jamaica. And I know we all want to be in Jamaica right about now, but it may not be in a place or a season that's comfortable for you. But it's not about you being comfortable because it's something that God needs to perfect in you so that you can perform the assignment to bless somebody else. I'm talking about watchmen this morning. Somebody shout watchmen. Watch verse 23. I'm about to get there in just a second. 23. Uh, Let's read this. Then I arose 
and went forth into the plain. I told you that word plain means valley. And behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river of Chabar, and I fell on my face. Keep that up for just a second, because if you remember verse 15 of last week or the week before, uh, verse 15 suggests uh, that Ezekiel was actually in this place, Chabar. Watch this. And the Bible says that Ezekiel set. And he watched the whole Lord have mercy. He sat and he watched the glory of the Lord. Lord, why I'm preaching a text. Watch this now, God. Why do you have me in a season of isolation? Watch this. The previous text says that he sat and he saw, but now he experiences the same glory while he's in a season of isolation. And now we see that he falls on his face. During your season of isolation, uh, there must be a change in posture uh, that suggests to God, God, I get it in this season. Uh, It's not about me, uh, but it's all about you. Somebody shout, watchmen, watchmen, watchmen. It's amazing because when you are familiar, somebody shout familiar. When you are familiar to neighbor with the presence of God, you know how to respond in his presence. It's those that have never been in his presence, babe, that don't know how to respond when you get into his presence. How is it that we sing and minister Yahweh, Yahweh, and we don't know how to respond when he shows up? Oh, Lord, there some of us uh, that are still stuck uh, in a season of isolation uh, because we have not gotten it yet. Uh, We don't understand uh, that God is trying to perfect something uh, in us. Uh, You've got to learn how to fall uh, flat on your face uh, just like Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel uh, wasn't in a great place. Uh, The Bible says uh, that he was in uh, the valley. Lord, Lord have mercy. Stop complaining about the season that God has you in. The season that he has you in is for a purpose and it's for a reason. All we about to see in just a second while God had to call Ezekiel to himself. It was amazing. Now I told you that the name Ezekiel means God strengthened. And while he was in the season of isolation. He was being strengthened. It was amazing because the strength came when his posture changed. Oh, Lord have mercy. When you learn how to change your posture in the presence of God, it's not about you, but it must be all about God. Somebody shout, watch me. Be careful about accepting assignments that you are not prepared to handle. Oh, Lord. There are some of us, we want assignments because it look good. We want assignments because it comes with platforms. We want assignments because it comes with adjutants. I don't need an adjutant. I can carry my own Bible. I can drink my own water. I can drive my own car. Just give me Jesus. Jesus. That's all I need in this season. Be careful about seeking out platforms because there's a discipline that comes with the assignment. Y'all sit, 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 sit. Some of us, we want the assignments. And that's great. But you've got to be prepared to, to do what the assignment requires you to do. Watch this. Then I rose and went forth into the plain, into the valley. And behold, the glory of the Lord stood there. The glory which I saw by the river of Chabar, and I fell on my face. Now, I want to pause there. Because as we continue to see this theme about valley, it was amazing. Because we already know about Ezekiel, how Ezekiel prophesied to the valley of dry bones. Watch this. God will use you continuously. Oh, Lord. In that place that he has you ordained in. There are some of us. We don't want to be isolated or assigned to certain territory. Because it don't 
don't look good. We don't want to be assigned to certain territory because we don't see the fame. We don't see the glitz. We don't see the glamour. It won't put me on IG. It won't put me on Facebook. Is it about you or is it about God's glory? It's time out for us to stop being Hollywood actors and we've got to learn to be citizens in the kingdom. I'm looking for Hollywood, not Hollywood. Oh, baby, I, got, I just want kingdom. I, I just want, I don't want a Grammy. I don't want a stellar. I just want a crown. Oh, Lord. So when I get to see him face to face, I'll hear him say, well done. Be careful about chasing assignments. People of God, when you're familiar with the presence of God, you respond. Somebody shout accordingly. You respond accordingly. It was amazing because isolation will require you to be called to a certain place. Somebody shout a certain place. My mother, my grandmother, they used to always have this saying, prayer closet. Never understood. My, why are you going to pray in the closet? What, what, what is it about you going to pray in the closet? And I remember my mother saying, that's the place that I've got to get to meet Jesus. You don't understand because this is the place that I have created to be my altar. Lord have mercy. When I need to go get instructions and direction for you and your sisters, I've got to be able to get to my secret place. Even Moses was isolated in order to see God's glory. The Bible says that he went on the top of Mount Sinai. And not only did he go on the mountain, but he was put in the cleft of the mountain. God needs to isolate you in certain places, in certain seasons, before he can reveal his glory. Everybody around you can't handle the glory of God. Everybody you're connected to have not been in the same season uh, of isolation uh, that you have been in. Uh, everybody uh, don't know how to change uh, their posture uh, when they are in the presence of God. Uh, stop trying to pull everybody to see the glory of God when you get an invitation. Everybody can't handle it. You're trying to figure out, Lord, how long will I be here? Come here, come here, come here, come here. How long will I be here? And you know why I, I get it. I want to reach back and help everybody. But that isolation season is not for you. It's for me. And out of this obedience, I allow myself to start loving the assignment and not working the assignment. So I pull you into my season of isolation. And I'm in this season too long. I'm in here past the season that God has assigned for me. Why? Because you have brought unauthorized people into your season of isolation. Go back, go, go. I'm not trying to cut you off. I just need to isolate for a season. <laughs> I've been called here. You haven't. I love you, but I've got to go get something from God so I can come back and help you. Oh. Sex. There are places that are designed by God. Two things God does not work. According to our Gregorian calendar. Oh, Lord have mercy. He works according to his time. And God operates in, somebody shout seasons. Somebody shout seasons. He operates in seasons. In your season, what if your season is seven years? What is your season? It's 20 years. Can you remain with your posture submitted and surrender until God says, okay, I'm ready to release you to do the work? Can you remain isolated? There are some things that remain hidden for a season. Oh, I'm preaching good this morning. Everybody can't handle you where you are now. God's got to perfect some stuff. He's got to shed some stuff. He's got to carve some stuff out for the right 
season. Lord have mercy. What happened, baby, when I got licensed in 1998? What if I tried to start a church in 1998? Lord knows I was a mess. I can preach about myself. You want to talk about somebody that was carrying around a minister's preaching card but was doing a disservice to the king and the kingdom. I was not ready for the assignment. God had to isolate me so that he can perfect his greatest work in me. Stop complaining about how Lord how you do that for them? I've been more faithful. How you know that was God's doing and not theirs? Oh, be careful not to move so quick because the fall from grace is a long way down. The higher you go and you have not allowed God to, to perfect your imperfections, oh, when exposure comes, that's going to be a long fall from grace. But when you remain consistent in discipline in your season of isolation, God will reveal his glory to you. Verse 24, get 24, go, 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 go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Then the spirit, I can take my time. The Ravens, we lost last week, so we're not going to play today anyway. Praise the Lord Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Then the spirit entered into me, oh Lord, and set me upon my feet and spake with me and said unto me, here he goes again. You sent me from isolation in the valley. Now you want to isolate me again in my house? Lord, go shut thyself within the house. Stay right there for one, just, just one second. Now, watch this. The, the previous verse said that he what? He revealed his glory. Yeah, he revealed his glory. Now, because he stayed in that season of isolation, and you see nowhere in the text where Ezekiel complained and talked back to God. He, he stayed there. Watch this. He experienced his glory, and because of his obedience, watch this, the Spirit came in him, set him upon his feet, and he had a conversation with the Spirit of God. Oh, my God. He had a conversation. Watch the text. Go shut thyself within thine house. Go to verse 25. But thou, O son of man, behold. I'm going to pause there. Because one of the things you've got to understand is obedience. Somebody shout obedience. It's amazing because... Ezekiel could have told God, wait a minute. You just isolated me in the valley. What more do you want me to do? And you know some of y'all talk back to God. No, why you? Uh -huh. He didn't talk back. He gave him a command. Now go isolate yourself. Now watch Ezekiel. Okay, God, I'll go do it again. But thou... O son of man, behold, thy shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. Ah, go to the next verse. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. Can I pause right there? Can I pause right there? It's amazing because we just saw Ezekiel now serving and operating under the influence. Somebody said under the influence because the Bible says that spirit came in him to pick him up on his feet. He was under the influence. He wasn't drunk as ye suppose. I can remember back in the day when old school church mother Fraser, they had to walk you to your car and they had to follow you home home because you were oh God take me back to those days where you was drunk in the Holy Ghost they had to let you lay on the floor service was over for two hours and you found yourself still speaking in tongues and the brothers had to walk you to your car and somebody had to follow you home because you were drunk in the Holy Ghost God take me back to those days Bible says Holy Spirit came in him. There was no fight. Somebody shout, there was no fight. We fight God too much. Pick them up. 
Because now of his obedience, he has a conversation with him. Somebody shout, he talk about the watch. I'm in a text. Somebody shout, watchman. He has a conversation with, I told you, the name Ezekiel means God strengthened me. Right? Watch this. He sent him, he isolated him in, 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 in the valley, in the plain, for a specific season, for a specific purpose. Why was he isolated? Good question. Come here, Trey. Come, come. Harry, Harry, Harry. Can I teach a little bit? That chicken noodle soup was so good last night. Come, 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 come. You need to make some next Saturday. Come here. Come, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch. Go to verse 25. I'm only going to preach it with the word. I'm not going to give you no opinion this morning. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee. This make no sense, elder. The people or the assignment that you love is about to shut you up. Oh, here is the problem. There are so many of us that fall in love with the assignment. Oh, Lord, we become too friendly with the assignment. We become too familiar with the assignment to where the assignment now wants to control and dictate. Whoa, my Shandia, what you decide to do. But the devil is a liar. You've got to be obedient to God. Here, Israel, the exiles. He loved his people so much. And watch how God has a ram in the bush. God could have stopped this. Woo. But there's some stuff God got to allow because it's going to cause him uh, to get the glory. Uh, if we decided to do what we wanted to do, uh, we would contaminate uh, the promise uh, that God spoke out of his mouth uh, concerning you. Watch this watchman. He says, Ezekiel, when you go there, they're going to bound you up so that you can't go out among them. Now, this is really powerful. There's a flip side in Revelation in the text. Here it is. The people you love so much, a prophet did not receive his own house, right? They're not even going to want to receive from you. But here is the thing. God says, okay, guess what? I don't want them ah, to receive from you just yet. Why? Because God operates in Seasons. Oh, we preach it good this morning. This is not the don't you moving too quick. And you preaching the text already. Don't move too fast. Lord have mercy. It's so important. It's so amazing. Watch this, my watch this, Melo. It's so important because what God gave him to give to the people, it was not time to release it yet. So God had to allow the assignment to do what they thought was right. But they don't even know they were helping God out. Ah, I'm going to help about a hundred of you all. There are some of you all. The assignment may not want to hear from you and they may want to present challenges to stop you. Guess what? God is going to still get the glory out of it. He says they not going to receive from you. Now can you imagine Ezekiel? But they my folk God. I love them. They my peoples. And those are some of the same folk that want to try to talk you out of who God said you are. You've got to stop telling folk your vision to so many people. God said I should do this. Be careful who you release your dreams to. There will be some folk that are close to you that will try to cause you to miss what God said you should be. Oh, you don't even know. You've got some folk in the kingdom that are thieves. Folk will steal your vision. Folk will steal your music. Folk will steal your money. Folk will steal your ideas. But the devil is a liar. What God spoke shall come to pass. And about she. Watch this. Y'all crazy over here. Praise Lord Jesus. Support. Ah, I'm going to dance right there. Lord, it's very, it's very important because when the time is right, oh, God says, I'm going to give you something that's greater. When the time is right, this may have already happened now, but when the time is right, somebody shout in due season. Somebody shout in due season. Oh, man, I feel like talking good. It's amazing. Now, 
he bound him up. <laughs> I'm sorry that you've got to play the role of the exiles. Watch this. They tied him up because they did not want to receive from him. Let's go to verse 26. I'm not even going to deal with this. I'll deal with this another time. Let's go to verse 26. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. Just in case, prophet, just in case you decide to allow yourself to be disobedient to what I've called you to do and not what they want you to do. I'm going to cause a dumb spirit. Somebody said a dumb spirit. I'm going to cause a dumb spirit to come upon you so that what I've already told you about them, you can't even get it out of your mouth. So I'm going to cause your tongue to cleave to the top of your mouth. And God is saying as watchmen what he has given you for those that you have been assigned to uh, the worst thing you can do uh, is to release the word of the Lord uh, in the wrong season. Uh, oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, the worst kind of prophet uh, is an undisciplined prophet. Uh, the worst kind of prophet uh, is a rebellious prophet. Uh, the worst kind of prophet uh, is a hard-headed prophet. Uh, I gave you the word, uh, not for now, uh, but for the right season. Here it is. Why is this so important? Here, the same folk that Ezekiel loved, they were the same folk where the Bible says they were persecuting other prophets. Woo, Lord have mercy. That's why they were in exile. They were persecuting other prophets before Ezekiel. Oh, read your Bible. It was amazing that they had him tied up. I don't even know if Ezekiel knew that other prophets were persecuted by the ones he was sent to save. And here it is right here. God is saying go ahead and bound him up because the very thing that you're doing to him huh, is going to be the very thing huh, that keeps him alive. Oh, Lord have mercy. There's some of you huh, you don't even understand huh, the very thing huh, that folk are scandalizing your name about. Huh, the very thing huh, that folk are criticizing you about huh, is the very thing huh, that's not only huh, going to save your life, huh, but it's going to rescue him huh, from where they are huh, so God can get the glory. Somebody shout, watch me, watch Watchmen here. Mine shut the right season. Now here it is. The Bible doesn't say how long the dumb spirits might shut the dumb spirit. I'm a priest that one day. The dumb spirit. Oh, you think I don't know? I I know who you are. I know all about you. God already showed me. I've just not been released to share the word of the Lord. Can I speak to some prophets that God has spoken that are speaking out of season? Woe unto you that speak the word of the Lord out of season. Woe unto you, watchmen. Woe unto you. Yeah, no, no, no. Here, here. It's amazing because this is when you know you've been in isolation. This is when you know you've been in the presence of the Lord. This is when you know that you've been stopped by the assignment because God, watch this, he shared with Ezekiel what was going to happen before he told them, oh Lord have mercy. It's not that there are some prophets that are lying prophets. No. It's not that there are some prophets that were off. No. It's not that there are some prophets, mother, that missed the mark. No, you were right, but you were just not in season. There's some stuff that you as a prophet, you as a watchman, you can cause people to miss the season that God has assigned for them. Yes, I may have called you to work this particular assignment, but it's not for this season. Huh? I need for you huh, to remain in isolation so I can perfect my work. Here it is. Wow. 
Amazing. And we don't get, we don't even get to the removing of the dumb spirit until like verse 23, 24, 25. So that means that dumb spirit was upon Ezekiel for about seven years. Oh, Jesus. Lord have mercy. The number of completion. But here in year eight, where God was about to release what he's already spoken. But he needs watchmen that are going to be in tune with his voice. Here it is. God has, I'm trying to stay in the text. God has, he had to keep him bound up. He had to keep him with his mouth closed. He had to keep him with the dumb spirit. But the one thing that they forgot was during his season of isolation, Tanera, the season where his spirit or his, his countenance or his posture changed to where verse 15 he went from seeing the glory to the glory living on the inside oh lord have mercy watch this you can bound my hands you can close my mouth you can tie my feet but one thing you can't do is take away the spirit of the lord that's living on the inside of me the one thing you can't touch is the holy ghost that's living on the inside of me wow you are confined wow you may feel like you're lonely huh? because you got the Holy Ghost huh? that's living huh? on the inside of you. Huh? The Bible says huh? that when Jesus huh? ascended huh? to be with his father, huh? he said huh? that I'll leave you huh? with a comforter huh? while I'm in huh? my season huh? of isolation. Huh? I'm not lonely. Huh? I've got the comforter. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got the comforter huh? living huh? on the inside of me. Huh? Stop crying huh? and talk to the comforter. Huh? Stop complaining huh? and talk to the comforter. Huh? Stop pressing huh? and talk to the comforter. Huh? Stop worrying huh? and talk to the comforter. Here. Verse 27. Hurry. Hurry. No, stay there. Go back. 26. I just feel like dancing. The dumb spirit came upon him and shall not be to them a reprover. Why? Because they are still a rebellious house. In other words, Ezekiel, I don't care what I told you. Their posture will never change right now. There's some stuff that they've got to endure and go through. Let me speak to every watchman in this building and every watchman that's online. Stop getting frustrated when folk won't respond to what you know God said. It's just not the season yet. Oh, Lord. I was talking. I was talking to the jeweler the other day, and we were talking about diamonds, and there were some diamonds that he said said, babe, I'm going to get you on one day too, but he said there were some diamonds that he said they are so expensive that when they go, I forgot the country that he said they go to, that when they go into the cave mines, they got to dig, and they've got to dig, and they've got to dig. He said then they got to drill until they can get to the ones that are valuable. He said there are some things that look like they're glittering, but the most valuable jewels are the ones that are not even shining. Oh, Lord have mercy. The most valuable jewels are the ones that's got to be pulled out of the dirt. They've got to be pulled outside of the cave and they've got to be cleaned off. They've got to be polished up while you are in your season of isolation. I hear God saying, I'm doing some digging. I'm doing some drilling because when I pull you out, I'm going to dust you off and poke are going to see the value that in your life they won't see the value while you're in your season of isolation they really don't know who you are but in due season in due season in due season in due season in just a matter of time God is saying when I pull you out of isolation when I pull you out of the dead places when I pull you, uh, uh, Lord, have mercy. 
I feel like preaching. Uh, help me out here. When I pull you uh, out of the places uh, where uh, you need to be polished off, uh, I hear God saying uh, that there shall be glory after this. Why am I'm still stuck in this season? Why? What is it about me? You're still in drilling season. But in just a matter of time, you've been at the bottom long enough. You've been in the dirt long enough. You've been in a dry season long enough. But in just a matter of time, God is saying that I'm going to dust you off and folk are going to see the value that's attached to your life. Somebody shall glory. Somebody shall glory. There's some of us, you don't even understand that your season of isolation wasn't a season that was ordained for you. Your season of isolation was part of your assignment. Why did I have to endure the season of isolation? Because Ezekiel, you had no clue that when you get to those same folk that you love, they was going to bound you up. You had no clue that I was going to allow the spirit of dumbness to come upon you uh, for a number of years uh, and if you can endure uh, your season of isolation uh, then you can endure uh, the attack uh, from the assignment uh, then you can endure uh, the attack uh, from the naysayers uh, then you can endure uh, the attack uh, from the enemy uh, why because I'm a watchman uh, and I refuse uh, to come down off the wall uh, somebody shall to watch me It was meant for me to be afflicted. Mother, I had to endure this season of pain and hurt. Everything that I'm dealing with, see, babe, we got it twisted. Some people see the platform and the stage, but they don't know what comes along. They don't know what comes along with the assignment. The lonely nights, the lonely days where you thought you was all by yourself. Folk don't even know that it was not just what you was going through, but it was Holy Spirit. It was the comforter that gave you the strength to endure the season that you were dealing with, to endure the hardships, to endure the struggles, to endure the pain, to endure the bleeding. I hear God saying there's some of you that are still in your season of isolation. But I hear God saying, I'm doing a spiritual surgery on your heart. I'm doing a spiritual surgery on your mind when you come out of this you're going to be able to say let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus I've got to go through this season of heaviness I've got to go on a spiritual of loneliness I've got to go through this season of bleeding I've got to go through this season of pain but Reuben may endure for a night but joy somebody shout joy but joy comes in the morning I don't know about you but I feel God I feel the Holy Ghost that's working on the inside I feel the Holy Ghost that's directing my steps I feel the Holy Ghost that's leading me I feel the Holy Ghost that's guiding me somebody show Holy Ghost Holy Ghost
This season is not unto death. When I come out of this, verse 27, Harry, Harry, Harry. But when somebody shall do season, oh, but when somebody shall win, that's the problem. That word win changes the whole dynamics of the text. We don't know when win is. You don't know how long you got to endure the season that you're in. No, you can't get rid of that friend that you really want to cut off. Not yet. It ain't season yet. It ain't time yet. No, you can't get rid of that one person that you want to delete. No, not. It ain't, it ain't time yet. Why? Because they may be connected to the wind. If you can learn to endure the season of isolation, if you can learn to endure the season of the attack from your assignment, if you can learn to endure the spirit of dumbness, you being bound, you being gagged, you being manipulated, you being controlled, if you can just handle that, then you can handle the win. But after the win, there shall be glory. But when I speak, But when I speak, heaven is right here. We got so many prophets and we got so many watchmen that are not speaking what he says. They are speaking what they say. But the word of God says, but when I speak, but when I speak, but when I speak, I feel like preaching up in here with the I, look what he says. He says, I, no, man ain't going to do it. But he says, I, no, don't send your enemies and your haters away. Because they got to be witness to what God's about to do. But when I speak with thee, I will open my mouth. And not only will I open my mouth and thou shalt say unto them, watch this, the same folk that tried to put the bands on you, the same folk that tried to bind you up, the same folk that tried to control you, the same folk that laughed at you, the same folk that pointed their fingers at you, now that got to be your audience and they got to sit at your feet so they can hear the word of the Lord for their lives. God is saying, watchmen, get ready. Watchmen, be not dismayed. Watchmen, be consistent. Watchmen, stay on the wall. Thus say the Lord God. Here, say, because now it's out of your hands, Shrey. It's no longer you. He that heareth. Watch this. Hear the prophetic. Somebody shall even after all that. You're going to still have a few. Oh, Lord. Even after all of that. You're going to still have a few that don't want to receive. Let him hear. And the reason you can't be upset because the opening verse, the opening clause says, but when I speak, so now, after you've endured isolation, after you endured the valley, after you endured the attack from the assignment, now the only thing you've got to do, here's the final point, is be obedient. Only thing you've got to do is open your mouth. Because at a certain, I had to say that again. Lord. My God felt that in the Holy Ghost. It's important to understand that in the right season, God's going to speak. Why do you keep saying seasons? You remember the pool of Bethesda? Everybody else was getting in there. Everybody else was getting there. Can you imagine this lame man? The Bible said there were seven porches. And for some reason, 
he just could not make it. He, he could not get to the pool. Can you imagine year after year, you get an inch closer and you see folk who just got there but getting their blessing. You see folk that are still moving along and you keep saying, God, when? Can you be consistent and available if those that are going before you are using you as a form of encouragement? It may not be your season yet. And watch how God bless. I'm trying to merge. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to speak it. I'm going to merge these two texts together. It's amazing because here it is. Imagine them seeing this guy. Man, he's been here for a long time. I can get there. This, the water is troubled. But yet this same guy, when is it going to be my turn? But there are others that are getting their encouragement from your struggle. There are some folk, minister, that are receiving strength from your place of weakness. Why? Lord, why are you using me? Well, if you can be disciplined, I'm going to change the rules up because everybody else got to get to the water. The Bible says that at a certain season I'm preaching the water was troubled imagine everybody else running to be next says what's up with you God I ain't got nobody to help me I ain't asked you if you didn't have any help but the fact that you kept coming and because you were consistent I'm about to change the rules up for you. Those that went on may not see this miracle, but this is where God gets the glory, and this is where he puts you on showcase. Everybody else that remains are about to see God do something with you that he did not do with anybody else. The Bible says they came to him right where he was and healed him right where he was this is why you can't complain watchmen about your season put verse 27 I'm done I'm over my time I try to keep it to 30 minutes and he that forbeareth let him forbear for they are I didn't say this. For though Ezekiel, you endured the isolation season, you endured the uprising, the attack of the assignment. And because you were obedient, when you speak, it's going to be truth because you're lending me your mouth. I'm going to speak through you. And those who won't receive, woe unto them. I told you last week, watch me. There will be some blood on your hands for those who you don't tell about the goodness of our God. But here now, the responsibility is shift from Ezekiel. Ezekiel, those who won't receive, they are a rebellious house. There are some of you here today. You know the season that you're in. You said, Lord, uh, 2020, I'm, I'm making myself completely available. But I know we're only in January, but I still can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I'm going to trust you even in this. There's some of you that are here today. You haven't given up. 
But God knows you got a little weak in the assignment. You have not thrown in the towel. God knows you just need a little strength. I speak to you today. That strength shall be your portion in this season. I encourage you not to come down off the wall. Stay on the wall, watchmen. We're going to stay with Ezekiel for the next couple weeks. You going to preach next week, baby? Okay. We're going to stay with Ezekiel for the next couple weeks. Because it's later on, when we get toward the end of Ezekiel, to where I believe, I believe we're going to have a, a praise break when we get to that. Isolation season is going to be for a long time. It may be. That spirit of dumbness may be for a while, but it's not as ye suppose. God needs to shut you up so you don't release what you know. You can't release it in the wrong season. You cannot share what he showed you. You can't share what he told you. Somebody shout, not yet. God let the spirit of dumbness come upon me. I don't want to share it yet. I don't want to get in trouble with God. I don't want to cause somebody to move out of season and it be traced back to me. My prayer for some of you that are here today is that strength be your portion. And that as you continue to go through the season of isolation, that you'll know that it's for God's glory. Somebody shout God's glory. It's for God's glory. There's somebody that's here today. And don't be ashamed. We're in the top of the year. God knows you. You ain't got no money in your bank account. You ain't got no money in your pocket. You only listen, you don't even know how you're gonna make it this week. Is there one that's willing to share that? Where, where, where are you? Is there one this morning? Is there one that's here this morning? It says, come quickly. Come quickly. Come, come, come here. Come, come, come. I see my seed offering to you. Embrace her. Minister to her. There are some of you that are here today that are watching that this season that you're in that God will get the glory out of your life. Don't throw in the towel. It's not about you. Here's the thing about the watchman. It's not about us. What God has, ass God has assigned us to some hard-headed folk. You ever been like, Lord, why, why this got to be my assignment? Lord, have mercy. There will be some folk that resemble who you were. You're just seeing who you used to be. Imagine if you, want, you don't want to deal with that. Imagine how folk felt about you. My prayer is that strength will be your portion. If there's one that's in the sanctuary today, I want to stay right there. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to stay right there. I love that feel. You don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. If there's one that's here today in the sanctuary, raise your hand. We want to pray with you. We want to lead you to Christ. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? You don't have a relationship with God. You have not been baptized. Is there one? Is there one? If there's one that's watching us online, you don't have a relationship with God. I need you to type in the word salvation. One of our team members will get back to you immediately got to be all about kingdom if there's one that's in the sanctuary i believe that in this 2021 this got to be the year where you're covered you don't have a church home you've heard from god and you want to be connected to this house certainly we want to embrace you is there one is there one certainly we thank god for safe house is there one that's online you may never be able to connect with us in person you may be in another country, but you've been viewing us online every single week. If you don't have a church home, we want to extend the opportunity for you to become part of the CLM Nation. We want to make you part of this family. My wife and I, we would love to pass to you. If that's you, type in the word family. If that's you. And we certainly want to welcome you to the CLM family. Come on, celebrate God. Come on, give me something. He won't always be like this.
It's turning around.